Hello and welcome back to Char Reads. Today we're going to be talking about The New Me by Hallie Butler. This came out in 2019 and I thought I would really dislike this. I thought it would really great on me. I was actually, I kind of picked it up to hate read it and I loved it. <laughs> Um, so this follows the story of a girl called Millie. She's 30 years old, she lives in Chicago, and she is an eternal temp. So the story starts off with her getting this temp to perm job um, in a like interiors company answering phones. So it's a temp position, but there's like opportunity for her to move into a permanent role. And she thinks it's going really well. So she spends the whole book like reimagining how her life is going to change when she has this full-time job and she'll finally like get her shit together. Um, meanwhile, we have this parallel storyline of her boss um, like seeing that she's not very competent and making plans to have her dismissed. I wanna read you a quote um, that is part of, of one of the quotes on, on the cover, but I feel like it just really summed up um, <laughs> something I loved about this. The new me shows us the futility of betterment in an increasingly paranoid era of self-improvement, one in which the female body is grated into the bloody empowered bits of itself. This is one of those things that I thought would drive me nuts. I thought it'd be really like, really like millennial-ish, um, very much <laughs> like, uh, gotta go to my yoga class and always thinking about like making gains and shit and how do I climb that ladder? Um, but I feel like it was almost ironic in how full of those kind of bullshit aphorisms it was, that it showed through the sort of glaze that us like young urban women are supposed to be um, into the kind of like cracking, um, absolutely like destroyed person underneath them. So I just wanna read you a quote. Um, she's at a party with her basically only friend, Sarah, and Sarah's talking. She's boring, I feel bored. And then I feel annoyed and I wonder why no one ever wants to talk to me because I'm a great conversationalist. It just takes me a minute to get into it. But once I get into it, I really roll and things are really great. I remember a lot of times I've been downright charming. I also remember a few times I've been abruptly aggressive, sure. But it's unhealthy to dwell on the past. <laughs> Like, that is so cutting and perfect. I think it's really easy to read this book as like a very kind of vapid, um, like, I know I keep saying millennial, but I, you know what I mean when I'm being like millennial and not just like millennial, the age group, but millennial, the kind of like attitude. Um, because she's like a privilege as, as fuck girl. Like her parents pay her, pay for her rent. So she doesn't really, have any massive economic reasons to like need to get a proper job. But yeah, it could be really trivial, but I think it breaks down into proper mania and then proper depression. And it never mentions anything like that. I was reading it and thinking, manic depression, manic depression. Didn't realize that manic, manic depression is bipolar. It got rebranded because manic depression has some negative connotations, but I feel like manic depression is more evocative of the sort of character that Millie is in this book. Because like, it still could be really vapid. It's still her like grasping onto this life that she doesn't even really want. She likes the idea of, cause she's like meant to like the idea of, you know, being able to go out for nice meals and paying for her yoga membership. But really it's like her deeply struggling with, um, I'm meant to, I'm meant to know what I'm doing by now. And I'm meant to have my stuff together and I just, can't and it's not through trying well it may be not through trying it's um it's not through not wanting to it's it's through being incapable of and being completely strangled by that feeling and having no way to escape it so she's obviously an unreliable narrator <laughs> but i think because it flips between her and her boss it sort of leaves enough ambiguity you could read it very generously as the world has just always been against her and she's trying her hardest and for some reason people only see the bad side of what she does. And like her one friend keeps pulling her down into these like drinking binges, which is why she can't like do sunrise yoga because she can't unshackle herself from her destructive friend. Or you could read it as her boss sees this, this temp girl who clocks out early and doesn't really do her assignments um, and isn't really being very friendly or very helpful um, and just is quite incompetent because she's really entitled and thinks that she's she deserves to have the world given to her on a plate. And the gap between those two narratives 
is so fascinating. Something I was thinking a lot about reading this after I had just read um, Eileen by Atesha Moshveg. These are both like quite dysfunctional characters and yet I didn't warm to Eileen at all and I warmed to Millie um, just like way more than I feel I should have. And I was like, what is it about these um, that is making me love one and hate the other when they're both pretty dysfunctional? When you have a dysfunctional character, I either go towards pity where I can really enjoy it because I'm just like looking down on her and being like, oh dear, um, or it's, it's like almost revulsion. Like I found Eileen just quite disturbing and um, that made it unpleasant. Where like if I maybe had like a slightly different mindset, I would have been pitying this woman who's um, like been really downtrodden and like borderline abused um, and hasn't caught any breaks in life. And this <laughs> completely privileged, um, everything's her own fault woman. How dare she look down at her coworkers and be mean to her friend who's only trying to help her through a rough patch. But no, it's this way around. I think there's something, there's like a sweet spot of relatability um, where a dysfunctional character, if you think that you're like a fairly functional person, um, a dysfunctional character will still have some of your traits. <laughs> but are they the parts of you that you are accepting of or are they the parts of you that you're fearful of? So like with Millie, the new me, um, I totally sympathize with uh, having short periods of time where I really feel like everything's going right and I clean the whole flat and then I write down my two year plan and I think I'm absolutely nailing life and then I shit on myself for going back on those promises. But the bits of Eileen that I relate to are the really, the kind of like dark bits of having a somewhat like perverse curiosity, not as perverted as her, but perverse curiosity and um, and just worrying about what people think of you because you know, your skirt looks dumb and your legs are ugly and you know, you're not very confident. And I think it's those two um, aspects where like I can really sympathize with this part of my, my personality. And with this, I want to separate myself from it, even though they're both like objectively bad traits. So that was a really interesting thing to ponder and kind of resolve in my brain, like what makes an unlikable narrator, an unlikable character appealing to me. Um, and yeah, I think I nailed it. <laughs> I would love to hear if you read this book and didn't like it or felt mediocre about it. Um, and also if you read it and you really liked it like I did um, or were surprised by your reactions to it. Have I made you wanna read this? I always ask that at the end of videos. I say, comment if you read it and tell me what you like or like comment if you wanna read it now. And I never get the comments cause I wanna read it now. So this is the time affiliate links down below. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video on The New Me by Hallie Butler and I will see you in another one soon. Bye.